Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters. My name is Adam Torres, and if you'd like to apply to be a guest in the show, just head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, so today I have Robert Wolf on the line, and he is founder of Terra Firma Business and Financial Consultants, LLC, and he is also host of Farming Assets Podcast. Bob, welcome back to the show. Hey, thanks, Adam. Great to be here again. Man, Bob, I got to tell you, I, I really like uh, introducing you and adding the Farming Assets podcast <laughs> to that. It makes me feel good inside. It did sound good. <laughs> All right, Bob. So uh, we'll, today we got a lot to cover. We're, of course, going to talk about the podcast. We're going to talk about your firm. I mean, we're heading in when this is being recorded, um, end, end of year um, 2022. I almost said 2023, but we're close. Uh, and uh, we're, of course, going to talk about the upcoming book that uh, you'll be releasing with Mission Matters, which I'm just I'm just thrilled to continue our partnership and to go further and helping you create content and get your message out there. Um, but we'll start this episode the way that we start them all with our Mission Matters Minute. So Bob, we at Mission Matters, we amplify stories for entrepreneurs, executives, and experts. That's our mission. Bob, what mission matters to you? My goal really is in mission is to make sure that we're able to utilize our expertise and communicate to business owners how they have the opportunity to increase cash flow and how the opportunity to utilize the current tax code um, to grow their wealth and to to continue to grow their number one asset, which is themselves and their business. Yeah, it's great. It's great having you back on the show. And I don't want to assume that, you know, some of our our new listeners and new audience caught some of our previous work together. So maybe let's just start with your firm. Let's talk a little bit more about how you got started and what you do. So Terra Firma Business and Financial Consultants. Yeah, thank you. Um, so started off as a financial planner uh, 20 plus years ago, actually right after 9-11 in 2001. Um, entered the uh, finance world, thought that was the bottom of the market and um, <laughs> learned my lesson pretty quickly um, how that's not necessarily the case. But uh, over the years, just started realizing I enjoyed working with business owners and uh, focused on uh, listening to my business owners and um, found that the majority of them all had one thing in common is that they felt like they had tax problems. And so our firm, my firm, uh, is really designed to be consultative and help educate business owners on not just how the tax code works, but how the various strategies, whether it's real estate, business, um, investments, retirement accounts, whatever the case may be, these various assets, how they work and how it allows them to grow. And so just uh, being able to be a complete nerd and, uh, and know these various aspects, um, it was difficult starting off, I will be honest, Adam, because everything you and I hear most of the time in the financial world is uh, be a sniper, right? The riches are in the niches is the terminology that a lot like to use. And I found actually the opposite is true. Being more holistic, standing back and being more of the aggregator of information and bringing the various aspects of strategies to business owners really has allowed our business to thrive um, and been able to help way more business owners than we have than the other model that uh, we're always taught and trained. So why business owners? A lot of different things that you could focus your um, your talent on and your time on. Like, like why focus on, on working with business owners? Yeah, I think I think some of it just had to do with my upbringing and uh, my German background. My dad's side of the family were entrepreneurs. My mom's side, more employee based. I'm not going to go into rich dad, poor dad, but <laughs> kind of some of that does resonate with my with my upbringing a little bit. Um, but I think really is just it gives me the best opportunity to affect communities. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is small business owners, uh, most small business owners employ anywhere from five to eight people. Mm -hmm. And when you think about that, that's a lot of responsibility on a business owner. And there's a lot of things that they have to think about as running a business owner. And when we all wake up at three in the morning thinking about our business, really, it's not to think about how we don't want employees. It's, it's thinking about our clients. It's thinking about our employees and making sure we do what's best for our people and for our community. And I felt that was the best way for me to be able to make a difference, uh, like a ministry, um, if you will. We believe that we're here to serve and we're not here to just serve our business owner clients, but we're here to serve their employees and their community by us being the best we can with business owners. And that was that was really the idea. 
Yeah, and, and I get it. And uh, and for all the business owners and entrepreneurs out there, um, myself included, we're not the easiest bunch to work with. <laughs> That's why I asked that question. We're special. <laughs> a lot of different ways you could spend your time. And I feel like, I mean, I, I just have a special place in my heart for the people yeah. that focus their time on uh, on small business and mid-sized businesses because uh, it can be tricky working with us. And I'll pick on myself there on that one when I say us. <laughs> yes, so I want to I want to jump around a bit here for a moment or two. So uh, I do want to spend some time on the book, but just to let everybody know, uh, the book is still in editing. We're still working out the content, but I did want to bring Bob on to to kind of announce the launch, which is coming up. Um, but uh, more so to talk a little bit more about the content that he plans to propose in there. But don't worry, I'll be bringing Bob back on for a, a full interview just on the book once the book is live. Um, so first off, um, what are some of the ideas that you plan to uh, to propose? In the upcoming book. Yeah, I, I think for me, really, the, the focus wasn't to get all nerdy in what I do as a business, but was really more of a testimonial of um, what my experiences led me to be believe and understand. And, and I think you mentioned about business owners, we're not always the easiest to, to work with and where we are special. Um, but we all are, if you think about it, and we all have a unique path. And our path is uh, uh, in front of us are based on our experiences and our the lessons that we learn in those experiences. Mm -hmm. And uh, the path really is to choose your own adventure. And we have the opportunity to decide on what that path looks like moving forward. Sometimes we make it based on the previous experiences out of fear. Sometimes we do it out of his, out of his excitement and opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was really my my kind of my goal was to say, well, here, here's how we view things. I view things from my experience and uh, how really my future is not based on my past, but I have control over my future. So if I want to change something, guess what? I can change it. I don't, I don't have to be who I was. I can be who I want to be. Um, and uh, so that was kind of a little bit about kind of the, some of the motivation of, uh, of my chapter in, in the book. Mm. All right, so I'm gonna cut you off there. We're gonna we're gonna leave it there for the moment, and don't worry. Like I said to everybody watching, we'll bring Bob back on, and uh, and uh, we'll do a deep dive in his writing. But I do want to spend some time on Farming Assets podcast. So I'm just I'm just thrilled about this show. Um, how, how many episodes are you in roughly now? I lost count. I think. Yeah, we're at 15, and uh, I'll be recording 16 tomorrow. Yeah. Um, so it's uh, yeah. I mean, put your head down. You put your, and then one day you lift your head up, and you're. Wow. All right. Cool. This is exciting. <laughs> so how do you feel? I mean, other side of the mic, obviously, I know you've done a lot of interview work in the past as well, but but how do you feel now that this shows out? You're, you're getting steam. Like, how does it all feel? Yeah, I like it. I think it's a lot of fun. It's a different avenue. Um, I, you know, my son per personally watches or listens to more podcasts than YouTube channels. Yeah. So I think it gives me an opportunity to uh, touch an audience, a business owner audience that uh, mm -hmm. that I may not be touching. Um, but it also just, you know, I have a voice, I have something to say and, and I'm not scared to say it. So this seems like a good opportunity to, to share some of that. And, uh, some of the things I've learned, like I mentioned it earlier and, and, uh, things that I've learned that I think would be beneficial. And so, um, yeah, the podcast gives me that, that ability or that avenue. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm, I'm thrilled to distribute it. I'm thrilled to have you on the Mission Matters Podcast Network to help promote the show and to promote you and your business and your ideas. Um, but that being said, I know that you are a, a content creator. And now when, the reason I like to bring that up is because you referred yourself, you know, a couple of times on the as the kind of on the nerdy side or like to nerd <laughs> out in terms of the numbers and otherwise. And once upon a time, um, let's just say the creatives or the idea of being creative or creativity was a lot of times, let's just say, uh, silo to maybe the, the artists or the musicians or this or that. But I just I personally am a huge fan of maybe because I'm part of it and I'm helping promote it. Uh, but the whole renaissance of, of individuals that are, let's just say I say this affectionately you know the suit and tie people the yeah. suit and tie people have creativity and and, and also um, ideas and things that they want to get out to the audience as well yeah. and, and out there to to add value which is what you know some of the traditional arts are looking to do whether it's music or otherwise as well like everybody's just trying to add value in their own way with their own specialty and gifts so um, I know that's a long setup for the question Bob but where I'm going with this is um, you know as a creator like what are some of the things that go into how you plan your content and like kind of what you how you decide what you're going to what you're going to talk about and bring to your audience. 
Yeah. So for us, it's, it's, for me, it's always about education. It's always about trying to simplify um, and, or demystify some of the things that um, our industry, the finance industry, and you can use that as the tax and law and everything uh, included into that um, and demystify that to something simpler to where we can understand. Um, And we all have, we all have a gift and to be able to, um, take that gift and be able to express that with other people. And, and I just find that educating, taking that intellectual property, taking what I enjoy doing for fun for me may not be for somebody else, but if I have the ability or the gift to be able to translate that in a way to where someone actually gets to understand it. And that's what I appreciated about rich dad, poor dad. That was kind of my, the beginning of my journey 20 plus years ago was the way he communicated about money. And that made a big difference to me. So much of a big difference is this is why I'm sitting with you today Mm -hmm. and understanding how Robert Kiyosaki um, talked about money. And it it kind of opened up my eyes and my mind a little bit. And I've continued that that personal education process. And my wife, she's great. And she has this thing that she always talks about is that you can't always breathe in. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to breathe out. And so if you're always intaking, intaking information and you're not breathing it out, you're not giving it away. What happens if you stop breathing out mm-hmm. and vice versa, if you're always breathing out and not bringing in. So you have a balance. And I think that's the same thing. And the responsibility we have as the suits is mm-hmm. we have an intellectual property that we should be sharing with others that may not. And it's, it's a way it's a ministry. It's a way of giving back, so to speak. Yeah. So I want to, uh, and thank you for that. And I, I say that because anybody that watches this or is listening to this, like whether, like you have a voice, I, I just like to encourage people, like whether it's a podcast, it could be a blog, it could be YouTube. I mean, I don't care. It could be Instagram, TikTok. I really don't care about the platform, but the main thing is, is that you have knowledge, you have experiences, you have a journey that if you share that, you can really help others and you can help others maybe in some ways that you didn't, that you didn't expect. But if you just keep that inside, I'll, I, I, lo- I love the way your wife put it. Um, yeah. If you don't, if you don't breathe out, I'll take her words, uh, then uh, <laughs> it doesn't work. Like that story just stays with you and, yeah. uh, and it's a shame. So I, I yeah. encourage everybody create however you feel appropriate and within whatever you like to do. Um, all right. So shifting focus here, I do. We talked a little bit about Terra Firma. Um, I want to go deeper into, into what you do and how you're working with your clients, because I think it's unique. So uh, let's start with this. So you, you often refer to yourself as, a, as an asset coach and a, and a tax strategist. That's right. Um, so what does that mean? So really, I had a hard time and I expressed earlier, explained earlier that, you know, looking at the tax code and, and trying to, to communicate some of the my education and the things that I've learned. And um, I realized that um, I was not just a financial guy. I wasn't just an insurance guy. I wasn't just a tax guy. I was more of a holistic and I kind of encompass everything. And then as I dove down into our process, I realized that the first thing, if you want to save money on taxes, you really need to understand what asset you're working with and understand the rules to those particular assets that the IRS gives us as guidelines. Mm-hmm. And then from there, you can st- uh, strategize and de- decide on how you want a tax plan. And so mm-hmm. asset coach and tax strategist was really a, a simulation of what we do is reviewing and, and looking at assets and figuring out how the, the rules of those particular assets are. Not one's better than the other. They're all different. And they're all unique and we're designed and are specific and to the outcome that they create. The IRS has guidelines for each of those. And so if you're looking for more tax efficiency, organizing your assets in a, in a certain way makes maybe more tax efficient out, outflow so to speak. So, so that's really what an asset coach tax strategist does. It was, uh, it, it was definitely different than, um, Oh, you're just a financial guy. Yeah. Or, oh, you just do insurance. <laughs> yeah. And, and to be clear here and to be clear here, like, um, just for everybody listening, like you're not talking about working with it, like doing anything that you're not supposed to be doing. Like you're not working outside the, the, the bounds of the IRS code. Um, what it comes down to is just when you think about IRS code and you think about, you know, asset classes and the rules between all of them and that alchemy we'll say on how they all work together. Um, you know, some, many times just, uh, going to your CPA to do your taxes, like, isn't enough. So, 
know whether you're working in tandem with uh, with an asset um, with a uh, an asset coach and tech strategist such as yourself, or whether you're also doing the, the heavy lifting in the tech side as well. Like the bottom line is like there's room for opportunity here. Like there's very often times things that are being missed and or um, that can be improved upon. Am I am I kind of off on this or am I understanding this right? No, you're right. I mean, everyone that comes to me is a business owner that has a successful business. Yeah. Um, they've, they've had some sort of profit. They've been putting their money in different assets, whether it's real estate or retirement accounts or whatever. And yet they're they're still feeling that result of, well, I'm doing everything I've heard and been told, but yet I still feel like I'm paying more in taxes than I ever have. Yeah. And there's got, there's got to be a change. And they go to their CPA and their CPA is like, hey, we're doing everything we can, which is mm -hmm. accurate. They are. Yeah. And this is why the wealthy have tax teams is because there are different stra uh, strategic um, strategies. There's different expertise that's out there that gives us the opportunity. And it all is focused on that particular asset. And so um, it's different for everybody. My, my advice to a restaurant owner is going to be a lot different than a manufacturing than a, than a doctor. Even mm -hmm. if they have all the same assets, it's going to be different because their initial structure of their business is different. Hmm. And so their outcome is going to be different. And it's all because of the IRS lays out. So to your point, we're actually following IRS guidelines more yeah. because we're looking at the specific. We don't need to be creative and create offshore this or offshore that. We're utilizing everything just that's right there. It's, I like to say it's hmm. vanilla ice cream. You want to put some chocolate on it, caramel, nuts, fruit. It's up to you. But it's all vanilla ice cream at the point. And hmm. it's your outcome that you want to serve it up is what you desire, what your personal um, output or your pers personal goal is as a business owner. Mm. Now, I know that um, obviously each each business is going to have a different situation, whether it's size of business, industry, like you said, restaurant versus um, versus manufacturer versus something else. Right. Yeah. Um, but like, can you give us a little bit more insight just into your process and what it takes to work with your firm? Because I know a lot of times the things that get all of us business owners out there, and entrepreneurs, myself included, um, from working with a firm or doing something that we know we need to do and should do, but we got to long list of things that we feel we need to do ahead so sometimes it's just that that thought of like okay getting started like what does it look like once i sign this contract once i get going like so tell us a little bit more about the process overall yeah so um our our process because of the amount of things that we do it's it's uh, it's ongoing so to speak there is no beginning or end right because you're planning and your outcomes create other other plans. So the very beginning of our, our process is we take our clients through our prospects through what we call our cash flow recovery process. And the cash flow recovery is basically as a business owner, you have. By the way, that's a hold on, Bob. That's a great name. The cash flow recovery program. Like who doesn't want that one? I want to recover right? some cash flow. Man. <laughs> who branded that one? <laughs> Uh, and, and that's, and that's, you'll find like, there's a lot of things that we, we call our process or things that we do like economic termites, my first book, right? Okay. There's things in our lives that affect us that also affect us in, in the business and in the money world. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, so we start off with the cash flow recovery process because we need to get a good idea of where the client's at in their own mind. Business mm -hmm. owners don't, and a lot of professionals that work with business owners don't treat them as separates. They don't treat it as a business and a individual, mm -hmm. right? They treat it as one or the other. And so in order to get a good outcome, we need to know both. And because at the end of the day, your cash flow from your business becomes your income as an individual. So if you have a tax problem, it's because you're taking too much cash flow out of your business. Mm -hmm. That's the way that structures work. 98% of the businesses are passed through. Mm -hmm. So if you know that, then how do you resolve that? And so we got to take that through the next process. And the next is that we start diving into the numbers, financial statements, tax returns. Uh, we want to kind of get an idea of personal spending habits. We don't budget, mm -hmm. but there's a tax consequence to everything we spend our money on. Mm -hmm. We go buy groceries. There's a tax consequence. Why do I say that? Because it's cash flow coming from your business to you individually. Mm -hmm. So I don't tell people they can or can't spend money. It's their money. They work hard for it, right, Adam? I mean, That's if right. someone came to you and said, you can't spend money so you can retire, it's like, kind of retirement is that going to be? I may not even survive that, right? Yeah. But understanding that everything we spend has a tax consequence, how do we organize, mm -hmm. right? And so just going through, so uh, really the whole process for us is a lot of data gathering, a lot of um, developing um, formulations and mapping it all out visually, 
we're all visual people more so now than we ever have been. And I know we used to write in hieroglyphics, then all of a sudden we learned how to speak. And then we kind of now today, we're all picture people again because mm -hmm. of technology. And so that doesn't really dumb us down. That actually allows us the opportunity to take numbers and help explain in a visual way, what's this look like? Mm. And then from that leads to what our plan will look like. And so it's different for everybody. So based on the assets and how do we organize or reorganize existing assets um, or use existing assets that aren't being used, they're being dormant and you're just kind of wasting money. And then with inflation, it's kind of eaten away at some of that, right? Yeah. Um, so it's really a lot of data gathering. And then we go through the initial process of here's what we found. Ask all your questions. So really the next step in the presentation is here's what you have. Hmm. Here's how the rules work. You have any questions to what you have. And let's go through that. And we, I need people to understand what they have before we, you can make a change. You hmm. can't just say, oh, I feel like I'm paying taxes. Oh, okay. <laughs> what does that mean? Right? Why? What do you have? And, and do you know why you have what you have? This is yeah. your money. It's your wealth. It's not mine. Right. It, mm -hmm. it is never mine. It's never yours unless it's you're the client. It's always yours as a client. So understanding that. And then then once they have a good idea of what the rules are, what they have, mm -hmm. then we can explain here's how we are our plan. Mm -hmm. And we start implementing the plan, what design we need to go to. Um, and that's really and if they don't feel comfortable about something. Great. We just won't do it. We'll put it to the back burner and we'll just keep moving. Is it safe to say that we're looking for some uh, some quick wins in the beginning as well? And and if so, like what could a quick win or what maybe have some of those um, quick wins look like in the past? Yeah. So this is why I like working with business owners because it's more instant gratification yeah. um, is the tax. That's code. what I like to get to. Where's the instant <laughs> gratification? Come on. <laughs> Give me my candy now. <laughs> yes. Um, with the tax code and business owners, the, the tax code is really designed for business owners. And so um, instant gratification is being able to show tax savings right off the bat with certain strategies that really have been on the books for decades that a lot of uh, CPAs don't use. Because if you think about most CPAs, nothing against them, nothing wrong with them. But the majority of their clients are, in, well, all of their clients are individual taxpayers. And mm -hmm. some of them are business owners. Mm -hmm. And so... It, it, in order to really work with the business owner, you need to dive into the various strategies and, and what the IRS allows business owners to do. And sometimes that's outside of the box of what your the rest of your 80% of clients mm -hmm. are like. And so the model of tax uh, preparation and the model of the CPA business world um, has some issues, just like with financial planning or life insurance or we, all business models have issues, right? Mm -hmm. But we are trying to correct that for a business owner in a holistic yeah. way. Um, and so that's really our focus is instant gratification business owner. You're not a business owner. You're an employee doctor for a hospital and you make four or 500,000. You've got a tax problem. Yeah. But you also have more discretionary income. So we can create instant gratification for them as well. Hmm. Um, so, again, it really depends on the client. And there's there can be instant gratification right off the bat. Some of my clients are just like, wow, I didn't know my real estate did or didn't do that. I didn't yeah. know I could do that. Or we just put money here just because we saw that we should and we did. And now we have something and we're not sure what to do with it. Yeah. What a shame, right? To, mm -hmm. have, to be able to put all your time and energy and your, your money into an area and you don't know what to do with it. You don't know why you're doing it, yeah. right? That's a, that, that really is a shame. And that's, that's a knock on us as an industry um, of not being able to educate mm -hmm. people um, to meet them where they're at. So anyways. It's great. Well, Bob, um, I just have to say it has been great having you on the show as always. I'm looking forward to bringing you back on once the book is live. But for now, um, what's next? I mean, what's next for you? What's next for Terra Firma? What's next for the podcast, books? I mean, what's going on next? Yeah, so uh, lots of exciting things happening. So we'll keep uh, focusing on our podcast and keep distributing uh, content and talking about economic termites and and different things as a business owner of what what assets are most important to you, what are most assets most tax efficient, and a lot of that content we add on also our YouTube channel. Um, but what's next for us is uh, once we get through this year, um, we have about four or five businesses that we are in the, implementing and putting in place for our clients and our. Um, and uh, helping them to 
create more tax benefits and, and create more wealth. Um, we have a few other uh, exciting strategies and, and uh, um, productive ideas for uh, our business owner clients and, and non-business owner clients, uh, people that want to be business owners, but they still like doing what they do, but they don't have the time to start a business. And so, um, so I, I would go in more detail, Adam, but you don't have the time for me to. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're bringing you back, so don't worry. Um, that being said, if somebody's if somebody's listening to this or watching this and they want to learn more about Terra Firma or uh, to connect with you and your team, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, no, I appreciate that. So you can always go to our website, Terra Firma Consultants LLC.com. Mm -hmm. um, you're welcome to email directly to me, R Wolf, R W O L F at Terra Firma Consultants LLC.com. Um, and then other than that, any other way of communicating with us, you're going to get, you're going to instant gratification if you do that. So, <laughs> oh, fantastic. So we'll, we'll put them for everybody watching this. We'll put all that information in the show notes so that you can just click on the link and head right on over. And, uh, and speaking of the audience, if this is your first time with mission matters or listening to an episode, um, this, we're all about bringing on business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives and having them share their mission, the reason behind their mission, really why they do what they do, how they're doing it, and what we can all learn and gain from that so that we all grow together. If that's the type of content that sounds interesting or fun or engaging to you, hit that subscribe button because we have many more mission-based individuals coming up on the line and we don't want you to miss a thing. And Bob, as always, a pleasure working with you, you. Uh, until the next time. Awesome. Thank you.